Welcome to Mellow Underscore Magikarp's YouTube channel. Today we're going to play a couple games with the Spiritomb list that I messed around with on stream the other day. I saw quite a bit of success out of it actually, and I thought I'd feature it in a video because I really enjoyed playing it. Spiritomb's one of my favorite cards. So let's uh, jump onto the ladder and see if we can get some good games. Right. So we're going to get into a game, hopefully we can get a good one off. Uh, we get to call the coin flip, we do, heads never fails, it failed, it's fine, my opponent's going to choose to go first, hopefully. Good, okay, we want to go second with this deck. Uh, it's a pretty big deal to get as many Pokemon down as possible. Just in case of a random reset stamp, I'm going to go ahead and bench the Spiritomb. The hand is fine, if they play a Fione, it's no big deal. And we're up against Orbital Morpico. Okay, this is... There's a very good chance I'm going to make a bunch of misplays in this game. Because we have to get damage on our tombs, so we can't put too much damage on our tombs. So we're going to start with a Great Ball into a Spirit Tomb. This is perfect. Okay, We really needed that because we're going to go here, 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 bench, bench the doll, and then go ahead and research. That's a pretty good hand. Uh, we're going to Great Ball first. Yeah, we're going to Great Ball first. We want to support her for next turn. A Jinx is nice. Then we're going to Stellar Wish. Uh, we could also grab... So we get down another two. We do also have the option to... Grab the Bird Keeper, which seems like a better choice. No, they're not going to knock me out, for sure, right? So I think we just grab the Quick Ball. And then we can go ahead and grab a second Tomb. We can get rid of... Fione is potentially very nice in this matchup, because they have VMAX with such high HP, but we're not going to need the Fione for a while. I'm assuming they play Swell. That's usually what Lightning decks have been playing, and we might have to Dedenne next turn. Okay, so we have another Tomb. Oh, I didn't check from you. I should have checked from you. That was definitely a misplay. We're going to build some spite across the board. So one play that I could make right now is I could... What's that? 100 HP. This can hit me for 3670 next turn. So I could actually just go put this here. Build... S yeah. You know what? We're going to go aggressive. This could be a very incorrect play. Pick up the Drachi. Go here. We're going to bench that, and then we're just going to hit. I'm assuming they're going to come up and electrify us. They can't knock me out with the Bolton unless they also pop a Coco next turn. Okay, there's a Quick Ball. They play Vikavolt. Okay, I, I really don't like them not going in with that. The Vikavolt would just kind of win this matchup for them. So I know they had a VMAX in hand, but like they should have just benched the Vikavolt and gone for the research and then see if they got the Coco after. Okay, they might get the KO. Loon's good. We're going to see an Electrify. But getting the chip damage on the Ore Beetle is nice because this can be three of our prizes. So we might just go three. Um, yeah. Okay, Dark Energy is very nice. Go ahead and build some Spite. Uh, what is this, 20 to all of our bench Pokemon? So we can take 30 next turn. Build some Spite. <clears throat> we could go... Retreat. 6, 190. So we can't KO the active. We could potentially go Retreat with Spike Myth. We're up to 50. And then we can Jinx. And then we can Day Day. Is a KO on the active worth that? It might be. Then we're going to go ahead and retreat into this. Take two damage counters. Put this on the bottom. Go here, here, Day Day. Yes. So we're looking for a scoop up net or okay. Huh. Check this. We'll take a bird. 
we could switch into Jirachi and dig for another switch or a scoop up net, and that would get us the KO. If we whiff, I think we're fine still. Okay, uh, I think I'd rather net. I could switch, move off. This has 40 HP left. They can spread 30 next turn. But they hit this. They're going to power these fellas up. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and take the net. Pick up the Jirachi. Promote this. So we're currently hitting for 220. Bench that. 7 times 3, yeah, 220. So we're going to go ahead and take the knockout. They're going to knock us out, but that's okay. Yeah. Cool. So they've got the turn 2, 220 on their Boltoned. We have a damaged ore beetle on the bench, and I'm not sure where we're going to pick up the other prize from, but they're going to spread damage and help power us up. So they need, they really need to pull out a tool scrapper, I think. That is their best bet. And we got the scoop up net as well, so we can actually promote this if they don't bump our stadium. Take 20 more damage by retreating it into the Jirachi, and then scoop up the Jirachi. There's a VMAX. So we do have to be careful with our scoop up nets. They could play a scoop up block mime, and then I think we actually would just lose. So that's another reason taking the scoop up net last turn was a good play, probably. They could spark us. Wait, that wouldn't even knock us out. Never mind. They can't spark us. I think we're fine. Yeah. They're just going to power us up here. As long as we don't overdo it with the anguish cries, I think we can pull off a knockout next turn. Oh, and they even take damage. Oh, I completely forgot about that. That's really nice. So boss KO on this is super realistic later. We can potentially KO this. It's highly unlikely, but it is possible. Five. Actually. Yeah, so we promote this. We still have Spike Myth. It's going to be seven, eight, nine. Oh, switch is really good. Okay. So go here. Go ahead and retreat into this. So now we get two more damage counters on us. We're going to go ahead and... Stellar Wish, I'm looking for Switch is very nice. Build some Spite. So we need 10 damage counters? Yeah, so we need two more. So we did get there. So we can go Scoop of the Jirachi. Go there. Go there. We have 30 HP left. I'm, I'm just double checking. Switch. Take two more. Stellar Wish again. Into another cape for the bench. That is very good. Go there. So let me double check. They can do 30 spread next turn. So we can definitely go ahead and build some spite there. We can go ahead and switch. We are going to take two damage, but that's okay. We're going to... I think we just go ahead and rod and research. We could also bench the Oracorio. Um, Let's go ahead and rod. We're going to put back Tomb and Fione. And then we're going to go ahead and put back double of these. How many nets do I have left? I'd like to get another tomb down. I'm like out of nets, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of the Oracorio. And we got the other tomb. Okay, that's very good. Grab the tomb. Build some spite. Again, they can only spread three damage next turn. So we can also go ahead and take ten off of... Drachi. Put it onto the other tomb. And we go ahead and knock out the active. Okay. So we had it for the 310. So again, you could see kind of the power. They did... I don't like my opponent spreading in this matchup. Obviously, they've never played this matchup. Okay, then they have to disrupt our hand because we have game in hand. But uh, they've never played this matchup. They can't get too aggressive with the spread. So they need a boss. They need to go boss, KO this. That's fine. Yeah, they need to go boss, KO this, and pick this off on the bench. And then just hope that we can't power this up. They also need to pop their Coco. If they don't pop Coco this turn, it's a free prize for me. They calm away a Zig. Okay, I don't get that. That's interesting. Unless they have another like quick ball or a way to get a Zigzagoon in hand, perhaps. Or they have a draw supporter. 
So we could actually get pretty punished here. Okay, that makes more sense. So we're going to look for the Zigzagoon off of this to KO ping the active. We're going to see what hand we draw. Uh, not a good one. Oh, they don't even need the goon. Duh. Okay, they're going to KO whatever we promote. I think we promote the Dedene. Four, five, six. Yeah, we're going to promote the Dedene. I will happily give up these two prizes, uh, and then we can just kind of win next turn, actually. All we need is an energy. So we can rod back the day day. Never mind. Okay, this is still fine. 200 HP there. This hits for five. Sorry, we can go two more damage counters on it. Um, what are they gonna hit? Interesting. Okay, so they get two prizes here. They have three prizes. So we do have to win this turn. Uh, a Fione does win us the game, so I think we're going to promote the Jirachi. We can Bird Keeper, or draw one of our last two switches, or... Hmm. Oh wait, wait, we got KO. We just win. Yeah, we just win the game. Never mind, we can just go Building Spite Jinx. Posture from the Jinx up to the Tomb. Build some Spite. There you go. There's a lot of math with this deck, but we, we got there eventually. All right, you can kind of see the power. This is a very weird matchup for sure. <laughs> Not a very meta matchup, but uh, the deck can escalate very quickly. So my opponent, they spread a lot, which definitely helps us quite a bit. Let's take a quick look at the deck. I'll show the list again. I know I introduced us with the list. But I'm going to talk about a couple things. You saw one very important thing in there that I've added to this deck it didn't have before, the Lily's Poke Doll. It's very nice. We have our free retreat energy. We have switches. We have bird keepers. So we have seven ways to retreat. But we don't always have a second way to retreat. So like on your turn, you can promote a spirit tomb with a hiding energy, retreat it to get the two damage counters with the hiding energy into a Poke Doll, put the Poke Doll underneath, and then get the tomb back in the active. I really, really like that. Uh, a couple other things we have with the Turn the Tables Heracross for ADP. So we beat ADP two ways. One, they leave the ADP active and let us get a hit on it. We want to go second. We want to go second. That's very important. So before they GX, if we can hit the ADP, we're in a good place. If they GX first, we can turn the tables, hope that they miss an attack, and then build up our board enough where we can just go knockout, knockout, knockout more consistently than they can go knockout, knockout, knockout. So it's pretty good. Uh, the second rod, this is one I was debating between. Two rods are very good. Highly suggest that. The three Bird Keeper 4 Research has worked out well. Fiona has been very nice. Obviously, it didn't end up mattering in that last game, but there's a lot of times where a VMAX deck can just shove a big VMAX active and say, all right, what are you going to do? Well, we can just say, all right, we're going to Fiona, give me a Dedene or whatever, something we can easily knock out. And Evil Admonition Hoopa is also very nice to get some chip damage. Your tombs are your most valuable resource. Your damage counters on your tombs are a very valuable resource. This Hoopa helps us to preserve our tombs while two-shotting stuff. So if a Hoopa can hit it for, say, 70, and then a Spirit Tomb can finish off for whatever HP we need to finish off on, that's actually a very, very big deal. Because then they KO a Hoopa, not a Spirit Tomb, and then we can still start escalating that damage incredibly quickly. So hopefully you tried the deck. I really like it. I think the deck is actually in a pretty good spot in the meta. Not amazing. It's not a tier 1 deck. But I think the deck is in an okay enough spot where I would consider playing it around in a tournament if I wanted to, like, maybe make cut. I don't think this deck could win a tournament, but I do think that this deck could potentially make a top cut, make a top 16, something like that, in one of these online tournaments. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, other YouTube stuff. Check me out, twitch.tv slash mellow underscore magikarp. And thank you all for watching. Peace.